So in this video, we're going to look at the experience from the point of view of a student logging in, trying to figure out, Alex, how to get started. So there's going to be some tips on the screen, which you should read through, that explain how Alex works, um, where each of the uh, tools is, like your main menu and your um, notifications, and uh, where your other assignments will be listed, and then um, you're going to go through a tutorial of the tools in Alex showing you how to enter um, answers like numerical answers for example how to clear them how to undo what you just did how to click next to go to the next um, item how to enter a fraction um, so if I wanted to enter a fraction I have to click on the fraction um, format and then enter my numerator and denominator and if I wanted to type an expression raised to a power I would type in the expression and click on the exponent button so x plus 4 squared for example if I don't want to continue typing the exponent I'm going to add to the entire expression then I click on the little blue circle if I want to highlight the entire expression um, to put it inside of a fraction it would look like that okay if I um, want to draw a line, I'm going to mark a point, I'm going to draw, use my ruler to make a nice straight line through another point, and then draw in the line, okay? And if I want to use a calculator, calculators are not permitted in 0057, but occasionally there are exercises where you will need them because we want to make sure that once you get out of this course you can use a calculator when necessary. So we'll practice um, using the calculator occasionally. Okay, so then we go through the tools tutorial and we have to do our initial assessment or initial knowledge check. And um, we want to make sure that when we're doing this that we really give it our best shot. Make sure you have the time to sit down and do it properly. Do not use a calculator. Do not ask for help because we need to know what you know and what you don't know. Only use the I don't know button if it just so happens that you're absolutely totally confused. Um, okay so let's go ahead and do the knowledge check. I've had students use the I don't know button a bit too much and unfortunately they, um, they end up having to redo the assessment because they end up with too many topics on their list and topics they really do know how to do. Okay so here's an example. Today eight friends went out for lunch. Their total bill was 66.32. They decided to split the bill equally and each paid with a $10 bill. How much did each person get back? You'll notice the calculator appeared which means you're allowed to use it. So 66.32 divided eight ways would be 829 and they each paid with a $10 bill so the difference is $1.71. Your questions will be different of course. Each person will get different questions and based on how you do with those questions Alex will decide which other questions to ask you. So it's responsive to what you know how to do. It'll take you to the next step. If you don't know how to do something, it'll take you back a notch. Um, so everybody's going to have a different experience with the, um, the getting started, the initial knowledge check. Okay, so let's say I don't know this one. Okay, let's say I don't know this one. We want to get through this quickly so I can show you what's next. Okay, let's see, that would be four. Make sure to click Submit. All right, as a percentage, you have to click the percent symbol if it's not there. Make sure to do that. Okay, I have a fraction to type, so I'm going to Okay, so I clicked the regular fraction, but I'm actually going to be typing in an improper fraction, and they may want us to have to reduce or give a mixed number. So if I click submit, oh, didn't write my answer in simplest form. Okay, so I need to reduce. So that would be 22 over 21. Okay, let's say I hit submit. Okay. 
Um, now it's going to see if I know how to use a mixed number. So we're going to write 6.19 as a mixed number. That means I need a mixed number format. So 6 and 19 hundredths as an improper fraction that would be 619 over 100. Okay, so it saw that I didn't write it as a mixed number last time. Let's and now it's checking to see if I know how. You're probably going to have about 30 questions, but again, plus or minus depending on how many you answer correctly. Um, let's say I worked this one, I want 10x squared, so um, I don't want to hit the exponent key yet. I want to hit the x and then the exponent key, so I raise the x to that power. And then uh, to get out of the exponent, I can either arrow to the right or click next to it. And I'm going to say plus 4x, and I'm going to say minus 8, and that's my answer. 30 questions. I think that should be it. So here's a picture of what I do and don't know. The colored part is what I know. The gray part is what I have not yet mastered. Out of the 345 topics in Module 1, I know 154 of them, which means I have 191 left to go. This is important because when you're planning out your schedule for how you're going to complete the course in a timely manner, in a 16-week course, you have about five weeks to complete each of the three modules. So you're going to say, okay, well, that means if I have 191 topics, I'm going to divide that by five weeks to see how many topics I need to complete per week. 200 topics would be 40 topics per week. So if you set a goal of 40 topics per week, then you know that you're working at a good pace. That's going to vary for each person, though. What's also going to vary is what this page looks like. So this is our personal timeline. This is what we're working towards next. We have the sections 1.2, 1.3, and 1.4 is the objective that we're working on. In our class, objectives have been titled by which section they correspond to in the textbook so that you can look at your e-text and read it. In this first area of 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, I've mastered most of the topics. 15 of 18. One thing you're going to have to ignore is the due date. In this class, it's a self-paced class, but for reasons that have to do with grading, we had to put in due dates. Obviously, you don't want to only do three topics, which is basically three types of questions. By November 25th, the class will be over. So ignore that due date. You're going to look in your Canvas classroom and um, you will have announcements telling you how far along you should be based on your study plan. And so let's look at my path. Okay, so the first topic that came up for me was expanded form. This is a learning page. It'll explain the topic to you. And when you're ready to actually work a problem, you're going to click Start. There are some links. So, for example, if you click on Expanded Form, it will give you a little explanation of that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start. You will need to get this many correct answers in a row to master the topic. Once you've mastered the topic, it's added to your pie. In other words, your list of items that you've, or topics you've completed. You have the explanation button at the bottom. If you need a little bit of help, you have a link to your ebook. If I click on the ebook, it's going to take me directly to the section from which this item came, which is, which is very convenient. You probably have a video that corresponds to the section. So if you want to look at that, you can click on video. Um, you can send an email to your instructor. You're encouraged to do so. Remember, your instructor wants you to be successful, so don't hesitate to communicate with them when you need help. Okay, um, Okay. so let's say that I want to enter um, an answer for that and I'm going to have to add some things together and multiply some things. So we have 5 times 100 and I want to add that to the product of 3 times 10. Oop, back, 3 times 10 and I want to add that to the product of 5 times 1. And now I've got my 
whole number in expanded form and I'm going to check it. Okay, I got it right. So I have to do that five times in a row in order to master the topic. Okay, now let's go back to our home page here. After I've completed um, certain sections, certain objectives, um, I'll be ready to work on quizzes. In this particular page, I'm not seeing the assignment list, um, but it will be popping up when there's an assignment available. So where it says no other assignments, you'll see quiz on sections 1.2 through 1.6 or whatever the case may be. So you're, um, oh, you can see it down here. You can see that it's coming up, but it's not available yet. Okay, that's going to be available starting Monday, August 17th. So then you'll go and you'll click on that, but you don't want to um, rush yourself. You can go, you can go try the quiz um, if you want to see, you know, how you're doing so far because you can rework the items that you missed. But I would recommend not doing that until you're at least close to having completed all the objectives. So the quiz on chapters one and two, for example, you're going to want to get through all the chapter one and two sections before you um, start working on that. The other thing to understand is that you will not be allowed to move on to the next objective, so say sections 1.5 and 1.6, until you've mastered 90% of the topics in this objective. Now, you should make it your goal to master 100%. Why? Because that's your homework, and people tend to do a little better on the homework than they do on the quizzes, and a little better on the quizzes than they do on the tests. Also, don't forget to check back into your Canvas classroom um, on a regular basis. So you want to work on your discussions, maybe share some um, questions that you're having trouble with or help other people with theirs. Um, and you get some points for that too. Finally, don't forget your instructor is here to help you. I want you to be successful and I want you to contact me when you have questions. You can do that through Canvas, or you can do that through Alex. I prefer Canvas, but um, if you're watching this video in another professor's class, you should, you should go with whatever um, method of communication that they prefer. The nice thing about Canvas, though, is um, we can respond to our Canvas emails directly from our outside email account. Can't do that with Alex, so I know that it takes me a little longer to respond to Alex's emails, so just keep that in mind. All right, that's all for now. I hope that this video was helpful. Good luck on your assignment.